Joe Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. So, the cancellation of WWE Backstage featuring CM Punk said to be a budget issue. Of course it's a budget issue. The show, If the show was, was doing well, the show would not be canceled, okay? And I don't want to be that guy, but this is another example of of what I've talked about countless times. Whenever there's a bad number for a show, all I hear is, it's it's 2020. These ratings don't matter anymore. People watch TV in different ways. People stream, blah, 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 or all of this. Well, here's another victim of bad numbers. Now, I know, I know already what I'm going to be told. But, Brian, do you see what the other shows do on FS1? Some of these numbers for backstage, they were much higher than some of these other shows. You're right. You're right. And you know what? As we've noted forever, wrestling ad revenues lag behind ad revenues for virtually every other program. In other words, if you've got a soccer recap show, and your soccer recap show is doing 95,000 viewers, and you've got WWE Backstage, and WWE Backstage does 175,000 viewers, because of the difference in ad rates that you can charge for a soccer show as opposed to pro wrestling WWE Backstage, the reality is that that show doing 95,000 viewers may in fact be making significantly more money than that wrestling show doing 175,000 buyers. There's also the issues with with uh, uh, demos. What are the demos for WWE Backstage compared to the demos for your average soccer show doing 95,000 viewers? The fact of the matter is, yes, some of these... In fact, the, here's, this should tell you everything you need to know right here. A recent edition featuring Bret Hart and CM Punk which I believe was like a week or two ago, did 175,000 viewers. That's the second best viewership in the history of WWE Backstage dating back to uh, 2019, November 2019. So the fact of the matter is, if, like, that should have helped, right? But the reality is it didn't help because, because professional wrestling shows, they need to do better numbers than virtually anybody else to make them worthwhile based on ad revenues for pro wrestling versus anything else. So once again, this is another example. Yes, ratings do matter. Yes, viewership does matter. Yes, ad revenue does matter. All of these things still matter in 2020 in some ways more than ever. Another show. Down. Well, you know, value to Fox and Fox Sports also matters. And these shows were all superfluous. They were all shoulder programming to push the bigger brand on the network, whether that be the Premier Boxing Championships or WWE or whatever. So, you know, the fact that these shows are going away, they could have had much better ratings. They could have had much better quality, much more newsworthy things that came from them, you know, more buzz created, and it still wouldn't have mattered. Uh, I, I, this is, I don't, I, you're absolutely right. I know what you're saying about ratings, Brian, but I, I don't even think if this would have consistently done the numbers that it did with CM Punk, say it always did 175 or what, it wouldn't have mattered. It just, it didn't. It didn't matter, and I know they're downplaying the fact that, well, made this wasn't really about budget. It's not really about COVID. Actually, yeah, it's about almost all of these things all combined together, and, and at the bottom line is value to Fox Sports. And, and again, if you can put on an old Survivor, or, you know, old Survivor Series or SummerSlam or anything and get you know as good or better ratings for something that you don't have to put out on a first run, I mean, why wouldn't you do that? So, I mean, I think there's more than just the ratings here that they well, come it, into hold play. On a I think it's just it's for everything. When, when it is everything, but it all it all comes down to how did the show do? That's it. I mean, they had to pay CM Punk. You think you see, think CM Punk did that show yeah, but, for like Brian, but, a thousand dollars an episode? I can't remember who's doing the Premier Boxing Championships one anymore. I can't remember. I I, I honestly can't. But like. 
so what about the 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 soccer show? I mean, I, I I know what you're saying, and but none of them, even if they were all doing better ratings, they were all going to face an axe, and they, these aren't going to be yeah, the only because ones. They, were and they haven't been the underperforming. Only ones. Everything that got axed was underperforming. That's just that's the it's the gist of it. I mean, if they were if they were if they were overperforming, if they were generating more revenue than they cost to actually produce, but by this their would design, not have happened. You're right, but by the design of those shows, they're never going to overperform. So they become, they are just what they are. They were shoulder programming to push the bigger brand on the network, and they just, you're right, they don't need it there or anything like that. But I think, again, this is, this is more than just the ratings. This is also... Even though they have tried to hand wave this, Frio Fox has, it seems to be a lot budget related too. Again, and a lot of this super, you know, superfluous programming, anything that they can get away with not filming or get away with doing from a remote location or anything like this, this COVID thing has changed a lot. And how the production of shows, just look at how NASCAR, I think if you really look into what NASCAR is doing and how Fox and FS1 has treated their NASCAR coverage, having it broken up, not having to have people on site i mean again a lot of this is is new budgetary reasoning too it is but it still comes down to how the show performs and the ratings and etc i mean think about this look at the numbers that wwe was expecting from smackdown on fox they've come nowhere close this this wwe backstage was was part of the deal before all of this started you remember they they were going to do wwe smackdown they were going to get that what ended up being WWE Backstage, the news show that we all talked about long before SmackDown and Backstage even debuted. CM Punk, he did that 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 tweet about how they were going to break the internet or change the business or whatever. I mean, everybody figured that this show was going to do really, really well. That's the whole idea behind it. That's why they hired CM Punk. He didn't come cheap. That's why they did all of that. And the show underperformed, apparently drastically. So that's that's the story. If the show were doing 700,000 viewers, like a replay of WrestleMania 30 or whatever, trust me, it's still on the air right now. But it didn't. And they had high hopes for the show, and it did not reach those lofty whatever. You know who must be banging it out right now? The bump on the WWE Network. Oh, God. Yeah, it's on the WWE Network. The bump could be canceled, too, for all I know at some point. I don't even know what it is. Apparently, it's on the WWE Network. Oh, maybe. Three three hours of Raw. Three hours of Raw. No one's ever told me what the bump was. Three hours of Raw on the USA Network. Not one time have they told me what the bump is.